It can be pretty difficult to decide which resources to use when you're studying for the USMLE Step 2 CK exam. So I wanted to talk today about the resources that I used, both the resources that I enjoyed using and continued using throughout my third year of medical school. And I also wanna talk about the resources that I stopped using. Um, let's go ahead and get right going on this. Um, the main resource I used was the UWorld Question Bank. They also have, um, there's an AMBOSS QBank as well that a lot of students are using now. Both QBanks seem to um, have success. Well, people seem to have success with either QBank. So you can really choose whatever QBank you prefer. I personally used UWorld. Uh, I went through the entire UWorld QBank throughout my third year of medical school. And um, I also went through my incorrect questions. The goofy thing, and I had a question about this recently, it, the goofy thing about the UWorld incorrects is that if you get an incorrect question wrong again, um, it'll stay in your incorrect pile. Um, if you get the incorrect question correct, it'll go out of your incorrect pile. So it can be annoying when you're going through your incorrects and the progress seems to go really slow in terms of maybe you start with like 1200 questions and then you take a 40 question incorrect like quiz and then you end up with like, I don't know, 1200 again if you got every question wrong. Anyway, it can be a little bit annoying. The progress can be really slow. So um, what I did is I did a lot of them and I started realizing that a lot of my incorrect questions were getting repeated. And when the time came that it became less efficient for me because I was having to recognize, okay, I, I've already seen this, but I don't quite remember. Like I'd have to read the question again to actually answer it. I don't remember which answer it is off the top of my head. Once it got to that point, I was like, you know what? Let's just stop with the incorrects. I knew that there were still going to be some incorrects that I didn't see, but it just wasn't really working for me in terms of efficiency. But I'd say I got through probably 80 to 90% of my incorrects by doing it like this. If I could go back in time, I would just flag all of my incorrect questions. I One thing that I did write is I flagged questions that I got correct, that I guessed correct throughout the year. That way, when I went through my flagged questions, I was like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm actually gonna like, you know, not guess this time, hopefully, but it, it was like I got lucky. So I wanted to go through those again. But if I could go back in time, I would flag my incorrect questions as well. Because when you go through your flagged questions, um, once you do it, the flag goes away. So that's just a lot easier than you stop seeing so many repeats. So that's you world for you. I also went through a lot of NBME content. I really focused on NBME content, especially towards the end. So, but also throughout. So I use the NBME clinical mastery series forms. These are subject specific forms. I use these to study for my shelf exams. So for psychiatry, I went through all of the psychiatry forms. For family medicine, I went through all of the family medicine forms. Um, so yeah, I go through all of those different subjects and then I repeated those. I went through them all a second time during dedicated. So these forms, um, there are about 50 questions, well, they are 50 questions each. I don't remember how much they are. It, it ends up being pretty expensive by the end of it, which sucks. But towards the end of dedicated, they had this like three for X number of dollars. It was a little bit cheaper towards dedicated. So I hope they do that again for next year's people around like May, June time. Although I know a lot of people take step two anytime. So I hope they still have the deal going for you all. Keep an eye out for it. Um, Okay, so all of the, yeah, I went through all of the clinical mastery series forms twice. And then I also went through the full length NBME content. Um, I wanted to get through all of those twice, but I just ran out of time during dedicated. Um, part of that is because I decided to go through my UWorld incorrects and I was on the fence about it, but I decided to do it because um, someone who is ahead of me at my school who did really well on step two went through her incorrects. So I decided to do that. And um, at the peril of going through my NBME full length forms. I also found a lot of offline content in regards to this. Um, I was unsuccessful in finding a lot of quality offline content with like answer explanations and, you know, whatever. So one thing that I did with whatever I could find, if there was a Quizlet that had information on it, I would use chat GPT to help me better understand the question and different answers. Um, that's one thing that I used a lot during, um, mostly dedicated, but also throughout the year was chat GPT. I used it to help me understand my weaknesses better. So if there's something that I commonly was mixing up, I would have it create for me practice questions. So with chat, if you aren't really familiar with it, it's as good as your prompts are. Um, I, I do pay for like the more fancy version of chat, but um, if you make your prompts really good, you'll get better 
responses. So if I said, um, I am a medical student studying for the USMLE Step 2 CK exam, I keep getting questions wrong about XYZ, please create for me five practice questions that are USMLE Step 2 CK style questions or NBME style questions. If you do that, um, you can do a little bit more practicing, which is what I did. Um, okay. Another resource I used was Anki. I used the Cheesy Dorian um, deck for this. I mostly focused towards the beginning of my, like, like if I was on, towards the beginning of my rotation. So if I was on pediatrics, I would use the Anki deck towards the beginning of my peds rotation just to learn the information. Simultaneously, I was going through my UWorld peds questions and my um, NBME CMS peds forms. Usually I would do the CMS forms towards the end of the month though, but I was going through all of that material simultaneously, but I would mostly do the flashcards at the beginning just to learn the content. Once I was done with learning the content, I never saw it again. I know a lot of people love flashcards and love to schedule them. I don't enjoy studying that way, so I just didn't do it. I found it too cumbersome for me, and if I got behind, it was demoralizing. So I didn't stay on top of flashcards, but a lot of people do flashcards and like have a lot of success with it. So I don't want to sway you one way or the other. This is just what I did. I didn't have a flashcard schedule. I just went through them once. Another resource I used was Amboss, but just the library. So at the time I, I started it, I think it was in maybe first year of medical school, maybe second year, I got just the library. It was $7 a month at the time. I think it's closer to 10 or something now, but you can search things, like if you wanna search some disease and then it will give you information about the signs and symptoms, how to diagnose it, how to treat it, certain complications, um, what would be involved in the differential diagnosis. So it gives you a pretty good like overview of different conditions. So I would reference this if I got a question incorrect for the second time. I would also use this if I noticed I just couldn't really remember a lot about this disease or was having a hard time understanding it, I would reference AMBOSS and use that. So I mentioned ChatGPT. Another resource I wanna mention is Melman Medical. So I didn't use, I didn't even scratch the surface with um, Melman Medical's information but he has these PDFs that I found to be really useful, actually. I wish I would have gotten through, like, I wish I would have gotten through, like, really any of them. I think I mostly did, PD, like, the um, ob gyn one and then the surgery one, I think. Maybe I got through one more. But they're really good information. It's, like, high yield, um, commonly asked questions. He pulls from NBME content. I don't know where else he pulls from, but those PDFs are really good. He also makes these questions based on... I don't know if they're UWorld questions or NBME questions or AMBOSS questions or if he just makes them up, but he does these videos on questions and he explains why the correct answer is correct and why the incorrect answers are incorrect. I think he does a really good job of teaching and I really enjoyed his, his stuff. I didn't listen to a lot of the videos, but a decent number of them, like when I was getting ready in the mornings. Um, I wish I would have gotten through more of his information. I wish I would have read through every one of his PDFs and watched every one of his videos, but um, the reality is that you just don't have a lot of time, but I did use this to kind of fill in the gaps here and there, like while I was getting ready in the morning. Um, one other resource I used was online med ed. I started using it towards the beginning of the year, but then it became a paid product, so I stopped using it. Um, for me personally, it, it was good content, but I was mostly using the videos and I learned better by doing questions and kind of teaching myself. So I decided for me, it wasn't worth it to continue doing it if I had to pay for it, but I did find it to be pretty helpful for my OBGYN exam. Um, but yeah, I, I stopped using it. Um, I also used my first aid book, like the step one first aid book. Um, towards the end of Dedicated, I was using the rapid review and I also just sort of paged through the whole book, um, which I know is pretty intense, but I just sort of paged through and found things that I remembered like getting wrong during dedicated. And that way I could just like read a little bit more about it um, and just sort of refresh myself. I don't know, it made me feel a little bit more comprehensive in terms of, okay, did I cover everything? Um, it's probably an unnecessary step, but it just made me feel a little bit better going into dedicated um, or going into the exam. Um, let's see here. Okay, and then in terms of like content review, one other thing that I did, which it's not really content review, but every time I would get, not every time, yeah, every time I would get a question wrong for the second time, 
I would write things down about that condition. I would write down the signs and symptoms, uh, like presentation, how to diagnose it, how to treat it, common complications. And um, sometimes I would put in differ- differential diagnosis things, or I would even write out like common differential like conditions around that. That way I could kind of keep things separate. I did it in a visually pretty way. At least I'm not very artistic, but I, I use different colored pens and I made it look kind of nice that way. I'm a visual learner. So I just visually kind of could remember things better if I did it that way. So I I just wrote out all of these things. I probably had like, gosh, 200 pages worth of things that I had gotten incorrect for a second time during dedicated. And I reviewed this all like the few, the few days leading up to step two, I took the day off prior to step two off, but like, you know, the days leading up, I I was reviewing this content. Another thing that I reviewed just really briefly is I had this PDF from my first two years of med school that was covering sketchy. So sketchy does all of these like different sketches of like, um, microbiology and pharmacology. So I just kind of like briefly went through them again because I wanted to just be really fresh on like some of that step one content that shows up again on step two. So I just did microbiology and pharmacology as far as like going through my um, sketchy PDF that I had. Um, So yeah, I think that's pretty much everything that I did. I know it's a lot. And I think when I talked about this before, I had some things that I had forgotten that I did and I wanted to mention those here. And if I have that happen again where I for like where I think of more things that I did I'll mention them but this is for for the majority I think this about covers everything like every single thing that I did during my third year of medical school to study for step two um, I am a DO student um, as some of you know and some of you may not know so I did have some like DO content that I needed to do but I mostly just did that between step two and level two I studied for um, the osteo- osteopathic manipulative medicine information. So yeah, but for the most part, I studied for Comlex by studying for step two. So yeah, I hope this is helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions and I will try to address them in another video. Take care um, and please remember to subscribe and leave a like if you like this video and we'll see you in the next one.